Hello and welcome to another video with the Bearded Tech Guy. In this getting to know Webcore example piston video, we will be going over how to mimic having a smart switch wired to a fan that is actually controlled by an RF hub that is paired with SmartThings hub. For this video, I will be using a non-smart fan that has RF capabilities and is controlled by my Bond Bridge, which is integrated into my SmartThings hub. I will also be using a GE Z-Wave Plus paddle light switch that has double tap capability. The switch is wired to power but has no load on it, while the fan itself is hardwired into main. Because my smart switch has no load, I am able to use both the double tap buttons as well as the regular on and off buttons of the smart switch. This piston example will also work on a Hubitat hub running WebCore as well. Let's get started by first creating a new piston and giving it a name. I actually have several rooms that I will be setting up pistons for, and I plan to make a separate piston for each one. This piston will have four if blocks. One will be for turning the fan light on when the switch turns on, one for turning the fan light off when the switch is turned off, one for turning the fan on when the top button is double tapped, and one if block for turning the fan off if the bottom button is double tapped. To make the first if block, click on add a new statement under execute. On the window that opens, click on add an if. And then click on add a condition. Next, select the smart light switch and then select the switch for the if block. Make sure to leave any interaction alone and then for comparison select the trigger changes to and set compare to to on. Once all set, click on add. Next click on add a new statement under then. On the new window that opens, click on add an action. Click on the device's drop down, select the fan light, and then click on add a task. From here we will select turn on and then click on add. The next diff block will be to turn the fan light off when the smart switch is turned off. I won't be going over each exact step for this if block, as it's exactly the same as the first one, just with the switch trigger being changes to off, and setting the fan light to off. If you need to, feel free to pause or slow the video down. With our second if block set up, to turn the fan light off when the light switch turns off, we can move on to our third if block, which will be to turn the fan light on when the top button of the smart switch is double tapped. To create this if block, click on add a new statement under the first two if statements, making sure it is under the last end if. On the window that opens up, click on add an if. On the next screen, click on add a condition. Next we will be selecting our light switch again. But instead of selecting switch for it, like our first two if blocks, we will be selecting button. For this if block, we will be turning the fan on when the top button is double tapped. For my switch with its device handler, that equates to button number one and I will be selecting it for the button under which buttons. To determine which button number is which double tap on my light switch, I logged into the SmartThings IDE and went to live logging. With live logging open, I then double tap the top button and the bottom button to see which button number was what. I always forget which button is what, and just double check when I'm making a new piston. Back to our piston, we will be leaving the kind of comparison as gets and the compare to value of pushed. We can move on to the next step by clicking on add. Next, click on add a new statement under then to add our action, which we will do on the next screen by clicking on add an action. After, we will be selecting our fan device from the drop down and then click on add a task. Next we will select turn on and then finish this if block by clicking on add. The fourth and final if block will be exactly the same as the previous one we just made, but instead of using button 1 it will be using button 2 for the trigger, and instead of turning the fan on it will turn the fan off. I won't be going over each step to make the if block, but you are welcome to slow this section of the video down or pause if you need to to follow along. With all four of our if blocks created, let's save the piston and test it out.
you'll notice a bit of delay for when the switch is turned on or off and the fan light turning on or off. This delay is caused by two things. The first is that the fan is controlled by my Bond hub and the hub to hub communications goes over the internet. The second reason is because with the GE light switches having double tap, they need to wait a small amount of time after the first press to make sure there isn't a second button press. These two things do add a bit of delay for the light, which is noticeable at first but is something I don't really notice anymore. With the double tap actions, the fan turning on or off based on the light switch is quicker. This is because for the double tap after the second button press, the light switch is triggered. In this scenario, you could flip the actions around so that a double tap triggers the light and not the fan, making the light turn on a bit quicker while making the fan response a little slower, but for me it feels more natural to have a single press for the light. You could also get fans that integrate directly into your smart hub, which would remove the hub to hub communications, making things a bit faster. One issue I've run into is when using a voice assistant to control a fan or light. Doing so causes the light switch to get out of sync with the fan, whereas the fan light would be turned on, but the light switch stays off. If you were then to try to turn the light off with the light switch, it would not work, as the switch is already off. This does not affect the fan portion, as the double tapping does not hold a state, so the fan being turned on or off by the voice assistant cannot knock anything out of sync. To fix this issue, we will need to add two additional if blocks that mimic the light on or off function, but a bit reversed. First click on add a new statement under the last end if, and then click on add an if. Next click on add a condition, and for this if block we are actually going to select the fan light itself with its switch being selected. Under what kind of comparison, we will be selecting the trigger, changes to, and we will be changing the value for compare to on. Click on add, and then click on add a new statement under then. On the new window that opens up, click on add an action, and for this device, we will be selecting the light switch. Click on add a task to move to the next screen, and then select turn on. Click on add to finish this if block. We will need to create a similar if block for the second new if block, but for this second new if block, it will trigger if the fan changes to off and will make the light switch turn off. Again, I will not be going over each step on this if block, but feel free to slow the video down or pause if needed. And with that, we have successfully modified our piston to make sure that the light switch also follows the same state as the fan switch when being changed from a smart voice assistant, such as Google Home, or when controlled from the SmartThings app. I would love to know what kind of automations you have set up in WebCore, so let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. And if you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel for more WebCore and other smart home related videos. Thank you for watching.